Welcome back, welcome back. Nice new lid. Got that as a little celebration for the bike pass in its MSVA. So, you want an update what's happening so far? Right, so basically, in the last video you saw the bike passed its MSVA test, the test that allows you to kind of put it through, put it on the road legally. Um, you need that step done before you can actually register a new e-bike on the road. So we're talking about high power e-bikes here, we're not talking about 250 watt e-bikes. So 4,000 watt high power e-bikes, like the one that's sitting right in front of me. Nice. So get ready because today's video is going to be about all the steps that I took to actually get that bike on the road. So right at the beginning, I actually built this kit up out of parts, which is kind of you know what a lot of people do. Um, you know, we actually now sell the parts on our store as well. But what I did original originally is just buy like an enduro e-bike frame and then kind of you know build the bike up from there and. You know, that process was kind of like a big learning curve in itself because I've never done anything like this before. And I ended up with a bike that I was really happy with and it's kind of an off-road bike, you know, you can use it for all different stuff. But you'll see on my videos, you know, this bike has been featured for, for years, for the last three years going back. So if you want to learn anything about this particular bike, just look back through the videos. Now, so yeah, I basically got this bike built up and I was really happy with it. And I was mainly using it for sort of off-road stuff. I had the incidents where someone, someone incident where someone called the police and complained about one of my videos showing this e-bike or e-bike or one of the other e-bikes. But yeah, whatever, that's another story entirely. What has been interesting on this whole process of building this bike, there's always been a lot of interest in the comment section and people always ask me when I'm out on it and stuff, is what, how would you actually get this bike on the road legally, you know, because it is kind of like a, a hybrid motorcycle push bike, actually moped really is the best way of describing it. Um, and even though I don't really like that term because it kind of makes you think of the, you know, 16 year old kids on the, on those horrible things, those 50cc me me. So yeah, a couple of years ago, I actually set out to put this bike on the road and this is going to be an explanation of the process that I've kind of been through. So you've got your bike built up, nice and powerful, everything's running smoothly, and the next step is you wanna get it on the road. Maybe you don't, maybe you just wanna ride it off-road or just ride it illegally. No problem with me, I don't care. But say you wanna get it on the road, the first thing you have to do is get a VIN number. Now, all these frames from China and stuff, they won't have VIN numbers because that's not what it is. It's just a bicycle, so it won't have a, have a chassis number, but you need a chassis number, uh, a VIN number, to actually get this thing registered. So step number one is get a VIN number. No, you can't make one up. You have to request one from, in the UK, you have to request it from the DVLA. So the first thing you do is you contact the DVLA and you basically say, I'm gonna put all this down in the description and on the screen as well, but you basically email, I'm looking at my laptop here, you basically email dvlavin at dvla, dvla.gsi.gov, gov.uk, whatever. You email them and you ask for a VIN number. You put in why you want a VIN number, um, so you just say it's a self-built bike, you put your address and your name and your phone number and obviously your email address, but they'll have that if you've emailed them. So you email that off and um, you will get a response back saying, they'll give you a reference number and they'll say that you know this is being processed. And then they say, you could get a response within four weeks, typical UK DVLA authorities. You know, it didn't take me that long. It probably took, I think I got mine in like three days or something. So they'll email or write you back with a VIN number. First step done. So step number two, make your bike ready for the MSVA test. Now, please go and download the manual. I'm gonna put a link again down below. Um, this manual is like 250 pages long, but it's not as scary as it seems because actually most of the stuff in it is for cars and motorcycles and uh, quadricycles, whatever you're doing. If you're going to do a moped, it's a lot easier because you can skip over a lot of the um, a lot of the parts that are in there because they don't apply. But please read it because the thing about reading it and understanding the process is not only will you be able to you know make a bike that's actually likely to pass, but if you're if you haven't got something quite right and you come to the day of the test then you can actually talk with authority or with a bit of background information, you know, knowledge that you've actually gone through and read this to the tester. So the tester will actually see, oh, you know, he's actually, you know, he's tried to do it, you know, and maybe this bit isn't completely right. But actually talking from my experience, 
the guy that I had testing my bike wasn't that over the top. You know, he wanted to see all the safety aspects of the bike. He wanted to make sure that I understood it all. And even if there was a couple of bits, like there's a couple of things like, you know, my number plate angle, that's not really a safety thing, but there was things like that he had read through it prior to me coming in and he kind of had refreshed his mind over, you know, some of these parts. So he was surprised to see that I had reflectors in the indicators. All these little silly little things that are in that manual that if you read, and you read thoroughly, then it will go in. Now, I'm the worst person. I'm the worst person for reading anything. Like, I do not read the manual ever in anything. So it was quite a challenge, but do it, please, because actually you've got a lot more chance of passing it because there won't be something completely wildly wrong, um, you know, when you go to that test and they won't just go, hang on, this guy just, you know, hasn't got a clue. There was the story that he told me, he said that a lot of people have been coming in to the MSVA test with things like scooters and stuff that clearly wasn't what you know he wasn't expecting to see it basically and you know so many things that are wrong he said oh you know when you turned up I was expecting like a soapbox to be wheeled out the back of the car and I, I just really wasn't in the mood for it so you can see that if you make your bike presentable and you make it look good um, you know I've always been a big kind of one for making stuff look decent and you know because I don't want to ride around on something that's good but yeah read the manual and do your best and I think you'll be fine I'm sorry, this is a bit of a talky one. Maybe at the end I'll stick some you know, fast off-road e-bike footage in or something like that just to make it less boring. But, <laughs> but anyway, the next thing you've got to do, so your bike's ready for the MSVA. So step three is actually downloading and filling out the MSVA application form from the website. Boring, you know, no one wants to fill out forms. So you download the form, that is on the website, I'll put a link down, it's on the Gov website, I'll put another link down below. I'll put all these steps one by one down below. Um, so step three is get that MSVA application sent off. Now you've got to send in, um, you've got to pay 85 pounds for this. So, you know, it's it's not a cheap thing, but, but you know, it is what it is. So fill in the form, you can submit it by electronic means on, on their website. Once they've got your application and processed it, they'll contact you by email, or I think I phoned them actually, and made the payment of 85 pounds. Then you can actually just book in the test when you want it, and I got mine so quick. I mean, it was literally like a week in a week's time. So it depends on the time, I suppose. Maybe in the summer, it might be a bit busier. So on the day of the test, I would turn up a bit earlier because if you've got to get your bike out of the car or van or whatever you're taking it in, um, you can technically, you can ride the bike to the MSVA, but good luck finding any insurance to cover you for that journey on, you know, without a registration. I was going to do that originally, but I just thought, no, it's just too much hassle. So yeah, turn up early. I'd take some tools as well, just so that you can fix anything. I had a nightmare with my headlight, which popped off, you know, when I was putting the bike in the car. I should have used my bike trailer, but anyway, yeah. So take some tools and stuff like that, just to make sure you can, you know, fix anything up. And um, hopefully you can sweet talk the tester to actually getting your bike passed and through the test. Mine was straightforward. If you haven't seen the video, go and check it out. It's a moped, so it was a lot more laid back than a motorcycle. If you're doing a motorcycle or a trike or anything like that, you really do need to pay attention to that manual because there's a lot of stuff on there. Mopeds are pretty easy, so you shouldn't have a problem. So with a bit of luck, the tester will pass your bike and then he will actually fill out a minister's approval certificate, a MAC certificate. Now that is the important bit that you need to register your bike. You can't register a self-built bike without one of them, or you can't register a, a purchase bike without a certificate of conformity. So if you buy a bike that's intended for road use, it should have, and it's not registered, it should have a certificate of conformity. So a lot of like Pedelex, things like that, that you can buy will have those, and that's what you use to register. So you shortcut all this beginning process, basically. Um, but if you're building a bike from scratch or from parts or if you're just trying to register, you know, a high power e-bike, that's what you need. You know, you need the MAC certificate to, to actually register it. So you have this shiny new bit of paper, which looks like a, a 1970s MOT certificate. And then once you've got the certificate, what do they want you to do with it? Stick it in the post to get lost forever. Yeah, they want the original certificate. So make sure when you send it to them, do it special recorded, tracked, signed for, the lot. So yeah, the next thing you've got to do, the next step is to first register your bike. So this is starting to get, we're starting to get there now. So what you have to do is head back over to the glorious Gov website and get a V55 5 form, which is for registering a new vehicle. Don't get the other one, which is um, for registering a, a used vehicle. I don't know what happens. I don't it, I, know, I might have done that. I don't know. <laughs> but basically the link is down below to that for that. 
Um, you've got to fill in the form. Now this form is just looks like what? It just it just looks like a nightmare. So they've done this accompanying thing called a V3355 slash five, also linked below, which guides you through what each thing means on the form. I mean, there's really self-explanatory stuff, but there's also stuff there which you, you need to get the terminology right. And there's a whole bunch of things about emissions on there which you can just skip over. But what's quite good is, is it actually tells you in the assisting form um, the bits that you can just ignore completely if you are doing an MSVA and it's quite a lot of it to be honest so it's quite easy to fill out in the end it looks like a pain in the butt but you know it's actually quite, quite straightforward why we have to do this is just beyond me but anyway this will get you done so this is the form you can see loads and loads of blooming boxes it's two pages of it you know it's not too bad but you know make sure you just fill it in right so that it does gives them no excuse. Once you've done that, you can't do this online. There's no process for doing this online, not as far as I'm aware. If somebody knows, then please let me know, But because doing it by paper, slow snail mail is just a bit of a pain. But anyway, you need a registration fee of 55 quid, more money. Um, you can do that on a postal order. So that's what I did to went into the bank and just done a postal order. Uh, I mean, I don't even think I've got a check, but these days. Um, you need to put in the MAC certificate in there. Um, and a dentacy document, so showing your driving license, probably the best thing to put in there for that, and your proof of address, and put it all in a nice little jiffy bag, wrap it up really safely, and send it to the DVLA. The address is also below on that, and take it to the post office and get it done. And as I said, make sure you send this special tract sign for the whole top service you can do, because if you lose that MAC certificate, apparently getting a replacement can be a bit hard they will do replacements there's a form to fill in for that surprisingly enough um you can get a replacement but just try and avoid that and hopefully you'll get it done and that's where i'm up to that is where i'm actually up to so the next thing you'll be wondering about is insurance so i'm not going to go into insurance in this video i'm going to save it for another one because i'm trying to sort out something with an insurer um and it could be quite exciting maybe they can give us discounts as a group and stuff like that but I'm trying to work on a, like a little kind of sponsorship project with that. So I'm not going to reveal that completely. But I will say I've been quoted about £290. Now this is for someone that's not ridden a motorcycle before. I've got a car license. I've got some speeding offences on there already. Like three points. You know, the usual SP30 stuff that most people have got these days. Um, and I'm 40 years old. I've a couple of years no claims on the Twizy. I've got a couple of policies in my name. Um, yeah. So, you know, that's the kind of area ballpark. You know, I reckon for most people my age, you're probably looking between 100 and 300 pounds. I think 300, it's probably gonna be at the top end. But yeah, I'll cover this in another one. You need specialist insurance and it's gonna be a third party thing. No one's gonna touch you comprehensive on it because I think it mainly for the reason is that it's just a custom bike. So you probably, you'd be better off just repairing it yourself, but you want the cover for the other parties um, and that sort of stuff. So. That's it, I mean, that's where I'm up to, guys. So I'll let you know what's actually happening um, in the next video or video after that. I'm waiting for this registration to come through. Hopefully I can get you know a nice plate made up for this. Um, I'm gonna try and get a smaller one, one that doesn't draw too much attention. But um, yeah, so exciting stuff. Right, the camera appeared to overheat. Must have been rattling on for too long. So yeah, there's nothing really much more to say about it. That's the process. I'll detail it down in the description. Um, you know, don't forget to subscribe and like, and if you wanna follow this process more, check out the other videos as well that I've done on this subject. Um, there's some earlier than, you know, the, the last recent ones that I've done as well. So go check them out. Probably link them in the description as well. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all that usual stuff. I'm keeping everyone up to date by that and stories on Instagram. Yeah, and that's about it. So I'll catch you in the next video, guys.